In other words, it's almost as if someone started a fire in front of a fire station. It should be boom. It's out in a minute. But what happened? BP had all those, all that equipment, the crews, the ships, the 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 skimmers, the the containment boom. It was all there on paper, under oath, in writing, and it was a lie. It was a phantom. It was nonsense. It was a con. It was a fraud. In other words, they said it was out there, and they figured, well, who's going to check out in the middle of Prince William Sound in Alaska? The only people out there, you just got a bunch of Alaskan natives. Who's going to listen to them? Who cares? So that when the ship hit, it was literally hitting at the exact place where they're supposed to have a pilot station which would have worn them off. They're supposed to have all the equipment, but none of it was there, none of it. And it was illegal. They signed in writing because they'd been caught before without uh, having the emergency vessels. It's like, look, every city has a fire department. You have fire trucks and you have firemen and you have hoses. And that's exactly what a containment ship is. It's like firemen for an oil spill, a fire truck for an oil spill. And it was supposed to be right exactly where the ship hit. It wasn't there because they lied. And they lied for a simple reason, to save money. And they lied and they lied and they lied again. And and here's the real tragedy, Alex. When that ship was heading towards the reef, the natives of Tatitlik Island were standing on their beach. It was at midnight watching this tanker come toward their village at Bly Reef, at Bly Island. They're watching that tanker come in and saying, what the heck is going on here? And those natives could have prevented the disaster because they were the ones who were hired by British Petroleum as and they were trained by British Petroleum, given the expertise, they're given the special Mustang suits so they could drop out of helicopters into the water, lay the boom. They were all ready to go. But British Petroleum had fired them. Originally, they were hired for one reason. The natives owned the Port of Valdez land. And they said, if you give us the Port of Valdez land for one dollar, one dollar, you give us the land for one dollar, we'll give you all these jobs. And the natives fell for the con once again. They gave up the Port of Valdez. They got the jobs. And as soon as no one was looking, they waited a couple of years. Then they fired them all, took away their equipment. And so they were watching helpless as the tank. And this is in. how they take over cities, counties, all these Just, corporations do the same thing. They have a good deal for you, then they cheat you. But expanding on that, fast forward to the BP disaster in the Gulf. Their own engineers said, uh, that, said well, we can't dump water in the hole. It's going to blow up. So they put more engineers in who would follow the orders. It just shows a totally delusional attitude by British Petroleum. So how long until they do it again? Well, right away. Let me tell you something, Alex. If you, In fact, right now at my site, there's a 95-second trailer of my new film, Vultures and Vote Rustlers, which is my investigation of BP around the world and the Deepwater Horizon. When you look at those films of the Deepwater Horizon on fire, you won't see one inch of, of boom going around that, uh, that stricken oil rig. You know, there's no reason why all that oil had to hit the, in the, the Gulf Shores, but it was just like Alaska. They lied about it. Here in Galveston, a much, much, much smaller spill in Texas. Today, you have all this rubber boom around this stuff. You have all these ships. None of that was there in the Gulf. Once again, BP had lied in Alaska. They got away with it, so they figured they'll lie again in the Gulf. So when the 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 uh, when the Deepwater Horizon, uh, when the pipe cracked and it was spewing into the Gulf, by the way, they lied about it, and they lied about the amount. Right now, despite the fact that, that uh, Mr. Obama has allowed uh, them to drill again in the Gulf, David Rainey, the guy who was in charge of BP Gulf, David Rainey, is under a federal indictment for obstruction of Congress, for lying. By the way, he'll get off. Watch, mark it down, write down. Greg Powell said, the guy's walking. The guy will walk, okay? You know, you had a couple of enthusiastic prosecutors who actually grabbed the BP executive. That ain't gonna, that ain't gonna fly, man. Believe me, Jamie Dimon will get him off. That's Jamie Dimon's company from, from J.P. Morgan. That guy's as good as home free. Now, so what happened in Alaska, BP, when we brought the case, we actually did draft the federal uh, fraud case, fraud and racketeering against British Petroleum, the Exxon Valdez case. But they said, if you bring that case, we'll never pay you a penny. So it was agreed because we had desperate people up in Alaska, desperate, desperate. So we agreed to take... $125 million from BP's insurance fund. BP did not pay a single penny for the damage it created, not one penny. So we took the $125 million because we had no choice.
because people were desperate. But they said, oh, hey, it didn't cost us anything in Alaska to lie about the equipment, so we can lie in the Gulf, too. There was no emergency equipment. In fact, BP and the oil companies just put out a big full-page ad in the New York Times and a lot of papers around the country saying, look at our spill response system we have. We have all these ships and we've got all this equipment. Hey, guys. You'd promised that before the Deepwater Horizon explosion. You promised it in writing. You promised it under oath. And you lied. And you lied. So what happened is because BP got away with it in Alaska, home free, they did the same in but the But I was Gulf. about to say it's bigger than BP or even Goldman Sachs or J.P. Morgan. It's, it's this culture of even 30 years ago, I've looked at the numbers, they would try to keep reactors from blowing up, nuclear reactors. Now they just let them all leak, 90 plus percent. They just... It, Am I correct in saying, we're going to break, Greg, that the elite are becoming more reckless and insane? Yeah, because there's no cost anymore. They used to have to at least pay a penalty, pretend that, that, that there was a price. There's not a price anymore, Alex. That's the problem. So there's government no and corporations have merged and they're above the law. It's gotten worse than I've ever seen. That's why I left of government, because there's no more prosecutions of the racketeers. Forget it. The corporate fraudsters have- I want to ask you historically, then you're a smart cookie. What comes next in history when, co when major corporations and government are above the law? What comes next? We're going to ask Greg Palace at gregpalace.com. That just saw the trailer for his new film. Check it out. There's so much complexity in the world that it allows corruption to hide behind it in legalese. And there's always going to be problems, but there is a systemic attitude. And I talk to people in media, corporations, you name it. Not just in government and high-level corporations, but in some of the public to just not care anymore. And... Basically, dump your motor oil down this kitchen sink. Uh, basically, let your kids watch TV all day and eat GMO. Uh, basically, drink a bottle of vodka every night if you want to and not worry about your kidneys or liver. There is a nihilistic attitude. But when you get it with military and you get it with a high-level government and you get big banks that are engaged in total insider trading, total fraud, who want to shut down all the other corporations they don't control, it's a new dark age we face. That's my view on where we're going if we don't turn this around. Um, you know, the good news is government has low approval rating. Corporations have low approval rating. They wanted war in Syria, but the world said no. They wanted to expand that war. I see a lot of positive things happening, but I see the establishment coming down with both feet worldwide, leaning towards more authoritarianism in an attempt to secure their ill-gotten gains. We got four minutes. Greg Pallast, where do you see the world going? Well, I think that unfortunately, you know, this lockup between corporations and the government, the official term for it is fascism. And one of the big problems is that there's just no penalties. Is there, you know, they used to at least pretend to grab a couple guys. Like I remember the, you know, the guy that put together the big uh, uh, electricity monopoly insult was thrown in jail by the antitrust guys on, under Franklin Roosevelt. Those days are gone. There's not even a pretense. They used to throw some, you know, a couple corporate guys to the wolves, but that, the, that doesn't happen anymore. The greed factor is completely out of control. Well, for example, let's go back to this BP business. Did you know, and you'll see this in my uh, film, go to gregpalace.com, um, which is that before, 17 months before the Deepwater Horizon blew up, Remember, the cement burst out of the uh, blew out. They used this quick dry cement process, and the cement gave out, the Deepwater Horizon. And they said, oh, we're shocked. What do you mean you're shocked? 17 months before the Deepwater Horizon, you had the same exact blowout in the Caspian Sea. The same exact blowout in a rig, a BP transocean rig in the Caspian Sea had the same exact failure, but they covered up. They covered up through bribes, through beatings, and they covered it up. Now, how did I know about that? I went to Azerbaijan. I actually got arrested there in the uh, what I call the Islamic State of BP because they control everything. And I was thrown out. I got film out because I had one of those little pen cameras, Alex, and I got my material out. But ultimately, I got the evidence of the prior blowout from the United States State Department, not willingly. It was in the WikiLeaks documents. Our own government knew about the blowout in the Caspian Sea, and they did not warn the workers in the Gulf not to use that process, that it had blown out. They kept the secret. They kept BP secret. And because why? Because it was not only BP, it was the junior partners in the Caspian were Chevron and Exxon 
And they used the same process, which was deadly in the Caspian Sea. And 17 months later, the same exact thing happens in the Gulf. They go, oh, we're surprised. How could this have happened? Well, it just happened just before. And you covered it up. And the government covered it up. And the State Department covered it up. And then, you know, you get a guy like, you know, uh, like Manning, Private Manning, who, who runs out and says, here's what they're doing to you. And he is the person we're supposed to be scared of. The anti-terrorism laws have put him away for the rest of his life. Well, he's not the terrorist. He didn't kill those guys in the Gulf. He gave us the information that could have saved those guys. In he the exposed Gulf. criminal activity. Greg Palace, can't wait to see your film. Thank you so much for visiting with us. Thanks, Alex. Keep but, up the good work. We'll try, brother. You too. We'll be back with the next hour. Wait till you hear this news coming up. Ties into Bank of America. And we've got breaking news this on anti gunners. GTN, the Genesis Communications Radio Network. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections.